I have 92 pairs of shoes, 63 of which are high heels. Now tell me, if you dedicate your life to that of a pilgrim, would you have 63 pairs of heels? Damn right you would and should. Life is hard. Might as well look fabulous as you stumble your way through it. <laughs> My name is Makhati Mukwena, Pilgrim in Heels, and welcome to Pilgrim. Now, the show is essentially about an exploration, a spiritual exploration of the soul. We all have a sense that there is much more to this life than we are experiencing. I grew up with a mother who was a traditional healer, and two of my sisters, actually, are also traditional healers. And the thing that my parents did was to straddle Catholicism with African traditional healing. And I think what that did for me, it gave me permission to understand that actually there are many different paths that are not discordant, but can actually be integrated in order to assist with walking this the spiritual path towards divinity. So what I'll be doing in this program is I will be ingesting some psychotropic plant medicines to assist with achieving transcendental states of consciousness. And some of the processes will involve breath work um, or movement, for instance. I'm hoping that sharing these journeys with you will inspire you to develop and perhaps deepen your own spiritual journey. My first ceremonial experience is me ingesting the Nishipai plant medicine. Nishipai is a powerful teacher plant from the Americas. I've been in conversation with a shaman who's going to be facilitating the ceremony. And he's been giving me very specific and clear direction around what I can eat, what I should be leaving out, just so that I am fully prepared for this really powerfully transformative experience. So, I'm having de-alcoholized bubbly. Well, because I'm not allowed to have my wine over there. It's okay. This is good. Mm. So, what? Our shaman has told us we cannot have no salt, no vinegar, um, no hot food, no chilies of any sort, and no meat, no sugar, no caffeine. Thank heavens I'm not much of a coffee drinker. What he has said is the food has to be as simple and as bland as possible. I've noticed since starting the preparation for Nishi Pai three, four weeks ago, that she, this gogo medicinal plant, has been working on me. My father has been coming to me. Now, my father passed away 10 years ago. It's almost as if he's introducing me to, um, to an experience, to a masculine experience um, against this very feminine medicinal plant that Nishi Pai is. And it's interesting for me because I've been exploring how the masculine, the sacred masculine, and the divine feminine reside side by side inside of me. As my friend Sarah and I arrived, 
The nervous energy I had about taking ayahuasca suddenly dialed itself up. Makati, you do know that there is no going back now. But before I could entertain the surge of anxiety, Byron, our shaman, came up to welcome us. Good to meet you. Gosh, after all this time. One of the participants was an old friend I'd studied with at university. V and I hadn't seen each other in over 30 years. She had brought along two of her friends, and the five of us were about to go on a spectacular spiritual journey together. Ugh, the vomit buckets. This is going to be an interesting exploration. As we settled in the ceremony room, I tried to create a little nest for myself, a little space of safety. I sensed some nervousness underlying our chatter as Byron prepared himself for the ceremony, and I became curious about what had motivated the others to join this adventure. So, um, what are you here for? What are you hoping for? I think I am starting to get a calling to, to work with plants, and so I want to sort of see what that means. And so I'm kind of interested in where the, where the plant's medicine might, if she chooses, to mm -hmm. take me. I think my intention is pretty much to have the veil lifted because I know um, there's so much more to life and there's so much more to what we allow in. You know, when things are low in my life, sort of the childhood trauma almost reignites a little. You have to kind of go back to that. And it's, yeah, and I kind of want to shake that off now and move forward. When we arrived here, I was quite nervous. Didn't know what to expect how it would influence me. If I will be incredibly disappointed, and I told myself I won't, because whatever will happen must happen. Everything is set up and ready. I'm feeling ready. Um, yeah, I'm ready for whatever happens, for whatever comes. <sighs> I welcome everybody, give thanks to Mother Earth, Mother Africa, thanks to Great Spirit, to our ancestors, to the ancient people, the indigenous people. This is first and foremost uh, for your own personal growth, for your own healing. And this is also about breaking old patterns, negative patterns that may be holding you back or that you know to be unhealthy for your lives. So I think we should start with a quick check-in. My intention is to be able to ask for help to remove the blocks that obscure my ability to hear, to see so that um, I can hear God, I can hear myself, I can hear those that inhabit the planet with me. I'm an artist, a partner, a mother, a teacher, and a healer. I have a mother who's in her, in the late, stages of Alzheimer's dementia and is leaving us. Mm. I want her, her journeying to the other world, to the next world, to be gentle and filled with love. At the moment, I'm a bit lost and not quite sure where I belong. So I, I do a lot of meditation and yoga because I have this deep inner longing to belong to this world and be part of it. What I'm in my mind's eye, what I'm seeing that I'll get from this journey is um, healing. I haven't been showing up for myself as much as I could. So I'm hoping to be enlightened by this whole experience. I have worked for the last 20 years in very difficult places and seen the harm that humans are doing to one another. My, my ask of her is that she will afford me new tools to serve her that are more, um, that are more gentle. I'm feeling deeply, deeply grateful to be here, um, to, to share this 
knowledge to share this medicine, to represent the Honey Queen, to represent the indigenous peoples, um, particularly of the Amazon. It's a deep practice. It's a way to get to a, a place of, of, uh, of peace, of harmony, of love, which the world desperately, desperately needs. That's, it's a way to get in touch with Mother Earth. It's a way to get in touch with your heart. It's a way to get in touch with, with God. And uh, I'm also extremely grateful to, to be here with just women. <laughs> it's mm. a, yeah, quite, quite daunting, so wish me luck. <laughs> um, <laughs> Haush. 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 We'll be working with a few different medicines tonight. Obviously, the honey. The honey is known as the, the grandmother, and the hape is traditionally kind of the grandfather. Hape gets administered into the, into the nose. It is essentially tobacco. It's, it's a channel to speak to God. Try trust in the process, and, and um, I'm sure we'll... Uh, We'll get through this together in strength and, and lots of love to everyone. Okay. The Nishipai weekend is, um, is uh, normally done over two or three days. And um, we would generally start the ceremony around seven or eight. Participants normally would, would come up to the altar two, three, four times even throughout the night and build up momentum, wanting to go a bit further within themselves, do more healing. When Byron called me up first, I panicked slightly. My mind was all over the place as I knelt in front of him to take my very first ever sip of psychotropic plant medicine. Byron, can you tell us a little bit about um, Nishi Pai and exactly what it is that it's made up of? It's two, two plants from the jungle. Mm -hmm that uh, are combined together, made in a brew, in a medicinal brew, in a tonic. The one is a vine. It's a very powerful vine that crawls through the, from the ground to the canopies of, of, the, of the jungle. Um, this vine is, is, uh, is, is the force. It carries a huge medicinal content in it. The other half of the, the Nishipai is uh, the, uh, the leaf. So these leaves grow in quite big bushes. And the other the leaves are picked and mixed in with the vine, worked for, for days and weeks, cooked uh, in, in, uh, in, uh, in a ceremony of making the nishipai. Why is there such a pull um, towards having nishipai ceremonies, mm. particularly today, in mm. today's world? Between 15 and 30 years, it's, uh, it's really um, uh, come out from the jungle and, and spread across the, the globe, if you will, in, in certain, certain places around the world. And I feel, you know, with collective sharing and collective confirmations that it's, it's, really, it's really come out to, to help, to, to teach, to help heal as a medicine. We work in, uh, in the traditional ways, but adapted to a uniquely um, kind of either South African or Western, Western way where we, um, over, over years and years and years of, of working with the indigenous healers and working with, uh, with modern healers and, and kind of co-creating a way that works for us. The, the world is in clearly a time of crisis in many ways. You know, there are new illnesses coming up every day from traumas to anxieties to stresses to autoimmune diseases to depressions, bipolaric, schizophrenic. Um, from that stuff to the political crises that we see, the environmental crises that we see, it's, it's, it's helping to remind what is important, the, the, the self-navigation to really take a deep look at yourself and the world. And the medicine helps to, to, to focus that. Waiting for the medicine to take effect was excruciating. Surely he should give us a second dose now? I wonder if others are having visions already. I drove myself crazy with incessant questions. A pilgrim's journey is told. A pilgrim's journey is told.
The second class of Nishipai was when I think the work started to happen. And, you know, one of my intentions was to clear the path for Mama Denny, my mum. Mm. And I saw her come to the door. Mm. And I said, Mama, you can come inside. And she came in and I held her. And then I said, come inside me. I will clear the things for you. And it's quite mm. emotional. But I saw for the first time what perhaps she is experiencing and what she's seeing. It was like these Lego type figures and they were very big and imposing and and I said it's okay I'll transform these and then she released and let go you know everyone else was tripping out and having these awesome visions and and I was sort of very in my own head and very with it um, and I slept like in cotton wool. It was, um, was wrapped up in cotton wool and just, it was very peaceful and lovely. Um, it was just underwhelming. I was expecting a bit more and left me feeling kind of meh. The first effect to hit was an unplugging, a switching off of my central nervous system, disabling all conscious control over my body movements. The shaking started, delivering energy first in my thighs and sacrum, moving it up my spine and shooting it out the crown of my head. Feeling Byron's presence above me helped set me at ease. Generally, people will will, will come to the ceremonies and, and sometimes uh, have a, a very harsh experience, realizations, and that's generally what the person needs to be their teacher. But a lot of the times, people will will have a divine experience, a bliss-filled experience, where they'll um, either receive a vision or an understanding of what is divine. Whatever the person resonates with, they will be shown, um, also depending on the lineage. The taste of the medicine is not unpleasant. It's like molasses brewed with the floor of the jungle. Yet somehow the smell induces vomiting, which is exhausting, but also brings relief. I noticed that we speak about Nishipai and ayahuasca, uh, and we use them as synonyms. Are they, are they the same? Are they different? Or? The Nishipai carries a lineage. It carries uh, a foundation. It carries a world of wisdom um, that we are all protected and guided in. Mm -hmm. um, using the word ayahuasca, it, it, it can also have many different variations of understanding, many different stigmas attached to it. Um, not necessarily the way that it can be portrayed in its, in its fullness, in its, in its true depth. We use the word nishipai, you know, we, we work in the, in, in the traditional way, in the old way. I was doing a lot of processing of personal stuff, for sure. And then we had... Um, the tobacco. And that, I found, incredibly powerful. Mm -hmm. I didn't have the same sort of physical response as you did. Well, it was painful for me. It was painful and also... Um, it, it almost unplugged all energy out of me and I, I just became almost um, loose-limbed and mm. loose-bodied, as if I didn't have any muscles. Mm. And I just had to, to surrender. That first hit of the tobacco was exquisitely sharp, like a well-aimed spear that bulleted beyond my nasal passages. The pain released a fountain of tears as my senses melted and congregated at my heart, which burst open. Trust that bucket. Tobacco was the f known as the first medicine given to man to help us evolve our spirit. It's an incredibly powerful medicine to, uh, to keep one's focus, to keep one's intention, to keep one protected from negative energy, free red. It's mixed in with uh, the ash of normally a, a sacred tree, grandfather trees, medicinal trees, hardwood trees in the Amazon. And there's a lot of people are working with the hape. Um, and finding deep resonance with it. It's a time for prayer. It's, it's, it can connect you to your spirit, your higher self, your ancestors, to, to your God. I mean, for me, it brought me um, 
to the presence of all these lineages, you know, from my mother's side, from the female side, and, and the masculine side. Mm -hmm. The pipe, that just felt like awakening, like a strength that went through my nose, through my whole body. I loved it. When we had this, the third dose, remember he asked us if we wanted more, and then we took mother and father at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then I purged. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that purge, then the hallucinations grew quite strong. And then I began to ask questions of the plant. What do I do about the Staphylococcus virus? And clear as a bell, as if there was a voice in my head, she said, bees, talk to the bees. The bees have got the answer for everything. And I said, bees and honey. And she said, yep. So I kind of got this vision that I need to, when I get an outbreak of Staphylococcus pimples or boils, I need to put raw honey on them and as a poultice. At some point, I felt an urgent call to the fire. So I went there, ready to receive its messages. I use fire a lot in my healing work, so this was fitting. I sat there for a while and then felt a longing to hear the beating of the drum. And as soon as I settled back in my mattress nest, Byron started playing. In the ceremonies, we become one, you know? We become one, and it's the profound teachings of, of synchronicity and, and the alliance that we all carry as human beings, you know? Energetically, the senses are so heightened. It's intuition True. that we have access to constantly, which we should be living by. <laughs> That was an intense, intense night. It felt like um, some kind of surgical procedure happening throughout my body. It felt like I was being welcomed by divinity, by God. Um, and I had it twice, but in a split second. And then this, this voice, this, this, um, the part that I identify Makati as, I was like, what's happening? What's going on? What's going on? And I realized that actually part of my journey is about um, silencing that voice, that constant commentator. But um, Gogo Nishipai is a wise teacher. She's a wise healer. Um, she knows how to just cast that small me aside so that she can do her job. Whether I'm going to do the frog medicine this morning, I don't know yet. <laughs> I'll see. <laughs> Oof. Oof. This is an important part of the weekend's process to share this far, what's on your minds, on your hearts. My arms, I was aware of my hands and my, actually just from the elbow, because the elbow acted like a fulcrum and, and there was just this movement and it felt like the masculine inside of me needs a lot of healing, needs a lot of heart healing. More than that, the masculine in the world needs a lot of heart healing. Mm -hmm. So it's possible and it's, it's imperative. With the happy, I had a very big ancestral experience. Um, I have my grandmother on my father's side, Violet, mm. <laughs> has been knocking on my door for a while. And Violet came mm. last night. Mm. And Violet was like, it's taken you a long time. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, thank God I can come in now. So for me, it feels like she's, she's here to guide, you know. She was mm. an amazing woman. When you were singing about the, 
the, the woman as birds. Yes. I became a bird, or I was flying with a bird. And the bird took me down the course of a very mighty river that I don't know, so I hope, I think, that it was the Amazon River. And as the vision was taking me along the river, um, it was as if a, a beautiful, a mighty hand was just sweeping away the human constructions. Sure. And she very clearly said to me, everything you take from me and use for your purposes, you must find a way to put them back gently into me. So I feel my feelings today are of tiredness and of being a really greatly blessed and enriched. Kumbu, kumbu, huta, he, kumbu, kumbu, huta, he, ya. I decided not to take the frog medicine. Byron advises against it if one is not fully certain or if one has internal organ issues, and I fall into both categories. When I read about the frog medicine, I thought this is exactly what I needed. It was even stronger as ayahuasca. I needed a lot of courage, and when Byron started to do the burning marks in, it wasn't painful. You okay? I was just concentrating on my breathing and looking into this incredible green of the bushes. Okay. The frog is uh, it's a vaccination. It's a giant green frog of the Amazon. It normally comes willingly into, you know, into, the, into the general area of the, of, of the, of the tribe and community. And, the healers collect the frog and gently scrape off the, the poison, the mucus from the frog. That's collected onto a little stick and um, uh, dried. Now, when we administer it, we uh, make small incisions with a piece of incense or root onto the skin, um, peel away the top layer of skin and uh, administer um, uh, amounts of the medicine into into the into the open wound. It's it's an incredibly powerful activation of the immune system. Why is it beneficial to include it in a like an ayahuasca ceremony? When there's heavy energies, when one is feeling depressed, anxious, negative uh, thought patterns, um, it's time for the frog medicine. It helps clear it out. It helps really. Um, activate a, a sense of clarity and healing. So you drink about three to five liters of water before, so you're drinking a huge amount of water. And with the poison, it's, it's bringing it all out. It brings out all the toxins, the bile, uh, physically and energetically. Everything was moving. And every slight panic that came up just went away. It just ebbed away again. Then another urge came to puke. And it came from so deep in me, so deep. It was as if something is getting out of me, like really with full force. And I, I felt this all coming up and going out. And I'm, I was so grateful that my bucket was green. I felt very tired and very empty, but good empty. Like I'm, I'm prepared now to let something else in. A pilgrim standing is tall. A pilgrim's journey is told. Sure, I've just slept for 20 minutes and, um, and I had a hot shower because I'm quite cold. And I'm cold because I'm tired. Um, and I'm getting ready now for the next session, another overnighter. And let's just see how that goes. You'd imagine knowing what to expect would make it less daunting. I wonder what tonight will bring. 
Let me set my expectations aside and surrender to what the great Gogo will give. You know, the fear that I had beforehand was... <sighs> Certainly after the first night that, that dissipated. And, um, and those fears were also laid by, by Byron's ability to hold space. Which I suppose drives to home how important it is to actually have somebody who is initiated and who really holds the lineage sacrosanct. Otherwise, I think it, it could be potentially dangerous. Hmm. It's a five to, to ten year study, even more, before one should even think about pouring medicine or facilitating groups. There needs to be a connection to the lineage, especially to receive the blessings from the elders and their support and, uh, you know, a lot of the resources that are gathered through the ceremonies need to go back into the, to the, to supporting the original people, you know. I just want to speak about my teacher, Chai Bane. Uh, he's, he's, he was, I be believe, one of the pioneers of spreading this medicine, spreading this teaching, spreading ancient wisdom around the world. I see this innocence and vulnerability in them, the resonance of what I strive to be, you know, which is to maintain that balance of power and, and vulnerabilities. And uh, he's, he's, he's the embodiment of that. I certainly had a pull toward wanting more of what the medicine provides, particularly since I hadn't journeyed at all with the first dose. Fear of losing out set in, so I went forward for more in pursuit of more visions and messages, willing myself to endure the taste and the smell that had become quite disgusting, not only of the medicine, but of my own vomit too. This inner work has its own demands, and it was comforting to know that the Huni Queen had lit a fire and were holding ceremony for us in the Amazon throughout the weekend. When I took ayahuasca, it was almost too much. It felt like there's too much happening in me. And then I just got lost in a space of deep, deep sadness and despair. And the feeling that Mother Earth is talking to me, saying to me, I can only do my part. I can't change the world. And I was very uncomfortable in the session. I was nauseous, much more nauseous than the night before. And this time I was wide awake, very sad, crying. And yeah, I realized that I'm actually mourning the loss of a relationship with both my father and my mother. And I knew I had to work on my understanding of that loss. I need to let it go and transform and rebirth myself. <laughs> Throughout the ceremony, the songs became such a powerful vehicle for deepening the experience. How, how is that working? The songs are really the, they're the guide for the ceremony. So there's opening songs mm. to bring in the force of the medicine, to wake the medicine up. Mm. Uh, and then you sing songs to carry through the, the long journey, so the, the two, three hours of, of, of navigation through the soul, through the cosmic, through the self. So you're communicating with the plant, but in, in, in ways that have been passed down through, through the generations. Okay, it's gonna be a very sharp burn. Mm -hmm. It's gonna... Clear the body energetically. Okay. Head right back. Head right back. Sananga is another mm. sacred medicine often administered during ayahuasca ceremonies. It's believed that the eye drops cleanse and balance blocked energies and expand spiritual awareness, bringing clarity that enhances visions. However, I'm not sure that I felt its full effect. As we surfaced from that night's nice adventure, I was grateful for the community we had created with each other. We've just 
finished night two of our weekend ceremony. There's a lot that's going to be coming through from, from these two days, two and a half days. Um, and um, I'm looking forward to seeing how they get integrated. But for now, I'm very tired. It's early hours of the morning, possibly about 4 a.m. And I'm going to have some soup and go to sleep. <laughs> the hardy does. You know, up the yeah, I'm, I'm really glad for tonight because it just sealed everything, mm. brought it together. Mm. Sure. A pilgrim's journey is told. A pilgrim's journey is told. Welcome everybody to the closing circle. Let's do a, a check-in to, to close the weekend. After my, f my second dosage um, of Nishipai, I just stayed envisioning, visioning all the time. Just this huge feeling, I can't even say image, maybe even image of, um, of the sacred um, feminine of the goddess, just and then gone. <laughs> I have a, a lightness in me that I haven't felt for a long time. And like a, a, a small laughter that's underlying, like a giggle <laughs> that's underlying, uh, underlying the feelings in my body. I definitely want to do more of this work in this, yeah. You definitely should, yeah. Uh... Oh. When I took Grandfather Tree into me, um, I sort of fell back on the bed and I just said, with a completely open heart, heal me. And he wrapped me again in this beautiful darkness that he brings. And then, of course, Mother came in and she, she danced and she, she was just joyful and wonderful. And she gave me all these visions of incredible green, just green everywhere. And then between the two of them, they put a, a thorn into me and they drilled and drilled and drilled and, and, then, they, and then they just pulled the thorn out. And, and she <coughs> said, uh, there was a hex in you and I've, I've got it, it's okay now. And, and then she said, oh, she said, you're such a good, you're such a good girl. <laughs> and I said, you're such a good mother. <laughs> um, last night, I was a lot more nauseous and I vomited more. And when I did, um, I kept on saying, get out of sadness. I think I've got some nice work to do and, and rewiring to do with my brain and, and understand where my hurt comes from and to move through it. The closing ceremony really solidifies and roots the, the healing, the newfound knowledge, the newfound uh, no, the, the spiritual activation of the weekend. I'm deeply grateful that as each of us goes our respective ways, that she journeys with us, she continues to walk with us and, and, and work on us so that we can be who we need to be inside of ourselves. I feel that as I go back home, some of the tasks that I see as part of what I'm here to do on Earth is about harmonizing relationships between men and women, between the masculine and the feminine. We drove out with Byron's caution fresh in our minds that we shouldn't speak too much about what we've experienced and just let it settle as the medicine carries on working. I'm looking forward to debriefing with Dr. Simon Weitzman, who is a medical doctor 
psychotherapist and a mindfulness and meditation expert. I'm very excited and very curious, incredibly curious, to know um, how the, the journey and the experience over last weekend was. I'm surprised at how grounded I feel. There isn't that dread that would permeate um, my waking up and, and, and flavor my day anymore. It's almost as if um, the, the arteries that carry my prana, my life force, have been unblocked. Amazing. Yeah. Do you, do you feel like you're kind of almost more engaged? There's more of you, more engaged, but more with less effort? Absolutely. Maybe the, maybe the, the, the positive quality has always been there, mm. but I haven't been aware of it because I've been focusing so much on the blockage. There was a time when I started seeing all these, these long ribbons of, of light just moving, moving all the time. Were they all in your body or did they extend beyond you? I felt like I was moving along with them. Different colors and they got progressively brighter um, through the weekend. That's incredible. So, so actually the, the, the visual experience was of light. But I wonder if it was more than just visual. There was a point when there was the most exquisite music mm. ever. And I know that it wasn't part of the music that was being produced by Byron. And I remember thinking, oh, that must be the Earth song. Mm. That must be Mother Earth mm. singing. Mm. Was it the whisper of music or was, it, was there something like, like a not even a voice, but a kind of information. Occasionally there would be a vision, a, a vision of something, and then the vision would go. And one of those, I had a sense of, oh, that's God, and then go. And then enter the small identified self. <laughs> Stage left. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> what was that? Are you sure that was? How can that be? No, let's have it again. Commenting on every little thing. And I realized that this voice is part of my biggest downfall. So that even when I have meaningful experiences, the voice immediately comes up and it cancels them out. So in, in, uh, in neuroscience, um, that's the equivalent is often referred to as the default mode network of the brain. And that's where um, the mind tends to hang out, hangs out in the story of me, or as somebody once said, the epic story of me. Oh, yes, of course yeah. it's epic, of the course. Epic story of me. <laughs> it's and, magnum opus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, wow, me. And, uh, and, it's, and it's characterized by an incessant chatter about everything that's happening, and especially the chatter about things that aren't happening. It feels like I can say to it, I see you. Yeah. I see you anticipating disappointment. I see that you're anticipating a fall, yeah. but it's okay. Because my experiences, um, what was going on, my visions and everything else that got gifted, they got gifted regardless yeah. of this commentary. He started playing music and, and I remember my thighs moving, moving on their own. My body was just <laughs> So that's most likely what we call neurogenic tremoring. Okay. We generate energy to fight or flee. And so um, you'll see antelopes running from a, a lion. If they're not eaten, they come back to the herd and they, you'll see them mm. circulating or tremoring. Yes, yes. So could this have, in a way, um, been a discharge of old trauma? Absolutely. That could have been sitting in my body for Absolutely. a long time. Absolutely, almost definitely what it was. And then there's the medicine itself. There's a, the molecule inside the vine is called DMT, dimethyltryptamine, right. which is right. a derivative of an amino acid. I'm sure the, the, the shaman, the facilitators know exactly how to mix the vine with other substances. So it can cross the barrier, so it can go into the brain and bind to particular receptors to elicit a, a response. Uh -huh. Inside the workings of your body and your brain, your physiology, right. is this unbelievable, exquisite process going on that is linked to this ancient wisdom. Like, how did they know to do that and mix it with that and then have these visionary experiences? 
but also hold it within a, a, a particular ceremony. So the vine becomes divine based on the setting. That's beautiful. Just as you've described in your day, I feel like I'm more, hmm. there's more energy flowing, there's more life force, there's more engagement, there's more commitment, there's more presencing. There's less of you and then paradoxically there's more of you. Thank you, what an exquisite conversation. Sure, thank you, Simon. I hope you feel inspired by my journey with Nishipai. Please join me again next time as we explore on another pilgrimage. Open hearts, open minds, the great spirit we look to find. A pilgrim's journey is told. Spirit in the wind, love is the cord that binds.